Hi, I'm Ron Cates, Vice President of Marketing for Networking Products of PLX, and I've been asked to give a short presentation on EMI mitigation uh, in 10G base T transceivers. It's an important topic because it is true that copper based systems like 10G base T are inherently more susceptible uh, to EMI events when compared to the competing technology uh, optical transmission. But it is true that if you handle things right, as we do here at PLX with our transceivers, it can become a very important differentiable feature uh, in your 10G base T transceiver and be able to handle uh, properly any kind of EMI interference. Electromagnetic interference, or EMI, is caused by a variety of RF emitters and can be classified into two different categories. If we look at the spectrum uh, of interest, the 10G base T transceiver essentially occupies a spectrum of up to 400 megahertz. And electromagnetic interference can either occur in band or out of band. Classic emitters that occur out of bands are things like Wi-Fi, cellular telephones, um, Bluetooth devices, anything that's outside of the 400 megahertz band, and all of the things that I mentioned are approximately 1800 uh, to 5000 megahertz. Emitters that fall inside of the bands are things like FRS radios and other emitters, and they're a little bit more difficult to handle. Out of band emitters uh, typically can be handled by on-chip filters that eliminate uh, their energy uh, from interfering with the uh, energy of the transceiver itself. Much more tricky, however, is how to handle interferers that fall directly into the same band as the one used by the transceiver itself. Testing for EMI events is typically handled by a standard called GR1089 written by Telcordia. And it specifies 8.5 volt per meter fields, which are typically margined up by most test houses uh, to 10 volts per meter. This is a very strong electromagnetic field. And if you can pass this particular test, you can pretty much be assured that in real life situations, uh, electromagnetic interference is not going to be uh, a problem for your 10G base T transceivers. EMI mitigation algorithms essentially fall into two categories. The first one is receiver-based. In other words, the algorithm is wholly contained uh, within the receiver, and as a result, no interoperability is needed between the receiver and its link partner. The other type is transmitter-based, and as a result, interoperation is required between the receiver and the transmitter. Let's take a look at both of those types in detail. As for receiver-based algorithms, the first type we're going to be talking about are differential uh, EMI cancelers. Now, the way this works is if you have a spectrum that is used to transmit actual data and an emitter pops up, a narrowband emitter, uh, inside of the spectrum, there has to be a way to be able to detect that in the receiver, and that's typically done in the frequency domain, and then a mitigating notch filter is inserted into receiver in order to be able to cancel out uh, this emitter. And coincidentally, that could also happen for several emitters when they occur. You simply place the appropriate notch filters in there. Now placing a notch filter in your output spectrum of course has some adverse effects on the data being transmitted. Now fortunately here for the line code that's used in the 10G base T, we don't specifically assign bits of information to specific frequency bins. It's not like a, a, a DMT type line code. However, being able to, or, or notching out certain aspects of the spectrum will cause uh, ISI or intersymbol interference, which then needs to be mitigated or 
uh, absorbed with a very good uh, equalizer. So this is how uh, the first category works, differential, by putting in these notch filters in the frequency domain. The next category is the so-called common mode. It's also a receiver-based algorithm. Now EMI inherently is a common mode effect. An emitter transmits RF uh, from someplace and that becomes a common mode offset uh, on the uh, twisted pair line that you're using. Now earlier when we talked about differential uh, cancellation, uh, you might have asked yourself, with a common mode type of an effect, why is there any kind of differential uh, element to cancel? Well, it turns out that that's because of imperfections in the twisted pair uh, or in the receiver uh, passive electronics uh, that causes some of that common mode energy to be translated into differential energy that can be misinterpreted as data. Here with the common mode uh, cancellation technique, we take on the common mode aspects of the emitter head-on directly. And that's done by utilizing so-called five-channel magnetics in which a, a special fifth channel is utilized in order to detect and uh, capture uh, the common mode effect. And in fact, on the receiver inside of the chip, there's a special dedicated fifth channel with its own analog to digital converter that converts that common mode information into uh, information that we can use. Now let's go back to our spectrum and redraw that nasty interference, um, narrowband interference from an EMI event. Uh, it's, of course, um, limited to a specific spectrum, which is now detected and monitored by a, by a fast Fourier transformer uh, in, in the frequency domain. And the job of the common mode uh, interference cancellation circuitry is essentially to create a uh, inverted version of this interference and subtract it from the composite data. So here at the output of the FFT is uh, the spectrum of interest, the actual data, the interferer itself, uh, but this ADC monitors and knows about this interference and creates an opposite version of it which then can be added to this one so that what comes out at the output is only the data. So this is a little bit different than the prior one uh, which put a notch filter in there. Here, you're actually creating a replica of the interference and subtracting it uh, from uh, the composite in order to be able to simply recover the data itself. So now that we understand the differences between those two receiver-based algorithms, differential and common mode, or sometimes called fifth channel uh, type EMI cancellation, Let's see what the differences are in terms of performance. Now, for differential, and remember, differential is the one where you put a notch inside of uh, the spectrum in order to notch out the EMI interference. Uh, this one has a success probability of 99% and a response time of just a few microseconds. Common mode, and remember common mode is the one where you take a replica of the inter interference and subtract it, that is a little bit better. That has a probability of success of 99.9% .9 and also uh, a response time of microseconds. And keep in mind these are both receiver-based algorithms, do not require any kind of an interoperability with a link partner. They're both good. The thing I should mention is that common mode is a little bit more expensive to implement. Why? Because it requires magnetics that have that fifth channel capability. And so it's up to our customers to decide whether the slightly improved um, probability of success merits the extra bomb cost associated uh, with that five channel, channel magnetics. So the next category of EMI mitigation techniques is transmitter-based and it is called fast retrain uh, type mitigation. Now that one works a little bit different. 
once again we'll start with a spectrum of data that gets interfered by a narrowband EMI emitter. Now the way this works is that the receiver senses that this interference has taken place. And what it does is that it sends information about the nature of that interference back to the transmitter and the transmitter alters its transmit spectrum in order to notch out the uh, cause of interference so that all of, its, all of the information about the data itself that it's transmitting is outside of that narrow band uh, where the interference uh, takes place. This is a very good algorithm but it does take a little bit longer because information has to pass between uh, the receiver and the transmitter um, after it's detected. Also, this is the kind of algorithm that requires interoperability between the transmitter and receiver because this information that goes from the receiver to the transmitter uh, needs to be placed on a channel which the uh, transmitter uh, understands. Now, unlike the other uh, types of uh, uh, receiver-based algorithms, uh, the probability of success here is very, very high on the order of 99.99%. However, the time that it takes to form all of this communication is on the order of 12 milliseconds. So this is a situation where you might want to use this algorithm as a backup to the other ones. EMI event occurs, you try either differential or common mode receiver-based algorithms first. If that doesn't work, then you've got extra time to be able to invoke this fast retrain algorithm in order to be able to knock it out uh, right at the transmitter. So in summary, what we've learned about are two different types of EMI mitigation algorithms. Category one is receiver-based where no interoperability is required between transmitter and receiver. Category two are transmitter-based algorithms that do require interoperability uh, between transmitter and receiver. And in the receiver-based category, there are two types, differential algorithms and common mode algorithms. Differential algorithms put a notch in the receiver. Common mode measures the common mode and subtracts the interference from the composite signal to recover uh, only the, the data that we want to get. In the transmitter-based fast retrain, that is also a notch but put in the transmitter rather than the receiver. The receiver does the detection and then sends information uh, to the transmitter as to where the notch could be placed. And here in the receiver-based algorithms, uh, the major difference between them is that the common mode version requires specialized five-channel magnetics in order to be able to sense and recover uh, the common mode interference. That costs a little bit more, but it's a little bit better. And as a result, you can make that trade-off of cost versus uh, probability of success. Fast retrain takes longer on the order of milliseconds as opposed to microseconds. Uh, but has a, a higher success probability. Now the key thing about PLX 10G base T transceivers is that unlike others we support all of these algorithms with the hardware inside of our chip so that the customer can decide which one to invoke and he can invoke them in serial fashion coincidentally in order to completely contend uh, with any EMI event uh, that takes place. And it is a fact that when independent labs measure our transceivers, uh, they find that they've got vastly superior EMI mitigation capability uh, when compared to others. So this is a very strong feature uh, that we like to point out about our Tenchi Base T uh, product line. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, once again, Ron Cates with PLX. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me, uh, Ron Cates here at PLX.